what would you say is the right age to start value education because uh, small children i don't think that they have the capacity to think so deeply and whether they can evaluate all these proposals so is there a different process for uh, teaching this uh, uh, content to adults and a different process for children yeah so we discuss the natural process of development of a child in a family so we can see that for a child to live with definite human conduct the parents need to have the right understanding so that they are able to give the right sanskar to the child from the very beginning the the preparation for educating the child can start before it took birth also so before we are uh, before the child comes to the family we can evaluate ourselves whether we are prepared enough to take care of the child properly isn't it do we have the right understanding and right feeling in such a way so that we can give the right sanskar to the child and since childhood the children are observing their parents and getting conditioned or educated so both the possibilities are there as we saw so if the parents have the right understanding and right feeling they are living with definite conduct then the children will get naturally educated in the family but if they are lacking competence then the children will get preconditioned in so many ways so the value education starts on the very first day i'll say right by observing the conduct of the parents then there comes a stage when we are able to have dialogue with the children so the dialogue with the children can be started when they are able to communicate with us and the words that we are going to use can be such that they are able to comprehend so here we are using uh, so many words but if the children are not able to uh, uh, understand the words precisely then we can talk in term, in those words which they are able to understand let's say uh, if you talk about samriddhi then they may be finding it difficult you know then we can use some word for that so that we are able to say ki pura hai ki nahi kam to nahi hai something like this and then they can understand better when you say sukh they may find it little difficult when you say khush they may find it little easier to understand so we can select the words properly but we have to look into our behavior whether we are proposing to a child or dictating to the child so right from childhood even if we are talking about daily chores so can we start by proposing to the child or questioning the child what is naturally acceptable to the child or are we going to impose certain things on the child are we going to dictate to the child so the process remains the same for all it is the self exploration and with children we see that we get very straight for our answers because they are not preconditioned in multiple ways as we get conditioned so if you ask them very natural questions you will get very natural responses also so if you are able to ask the right question then you also get the right answer very naturally only that our conduct has to be definite with the children our behavior has to be mutual fulfilling and the way we have a dialogue with the child that dialogue has to be in such a way that it promotes self exploration and not some conditioning so these things are to be taken care of so the process will remain the same and we can see that the self is the same in the child or an adult or an old person as you are talking about the feeling of respect we saw that the self is the same every child demands or uh, naturally accepts respect every child naturally accepts uh, trust so with that feeling embedded in us with that feeling of competence in us okay if we interact with the children then we are able to develop these kinds of feelings also also in the children mm-hmm. true um when we spoke of this uh, you know the child how the child learns so we mentioned some imitation and following so during this process of development could you just explain the difference a little more yes we talked about it briefly so when the child is imitating it is just copying the elders in the family the language the manners the way we walk we talk we uh, do our daily chores uh, the way we live so the child is just copying but in the phase of following the child is uh, adding one's own analysis to the activities and trying to make out how an activity is done so if i have to set my bed right okay so 
copying would just mean that doing one part of it in a similar manner but in following the child is able to observe that how does the bed uh, set uh, get set right what all is required to be done how to fold the bed sheet how to fold the blanket where to keep it so those things are also visible to the child when the mother is cooking in the kitchen then the child is able to observe how to maintain the kitchen right when we are cleaning the floor then the child is able to observe how to ensure that the room is clean so in following the imagination uh, is more included in imitation that part of imagination that uh, development of imagination is not to be seen so as a child grows the body is growing and there comes a stage uh, like the in the initial stage the brain is a little less developed it takes time uh, approximately as it is said maybe shamanadi can better qualify this uh, it takes about 8 years for the brain to get fully developed so during that phase you can see that the interaction of the child with the rest of the nature is also in accordance with the development of the brain so as the child grows the uh, role of imagination also grows in the interaction with the rest of nature with human being and the rest of nature so in the phase of following the analysis part has a major role to play while in the uh, phase of imitation it is just copying the activity that are taking place in the family so the child starts by imitating goes into following and then goes into obedience and uh, discipline and gradually leads to a stage where uh, the child is able to live with self discipline so this is the natural process of growth of a child in a family okay hmm um in society we talked of you know um, having this prosperity and all so are we talking about having equal physical facilities for all or is it that i can have a different need somebody else can have a different need because we you know the amount of money we have according to that we calculate uh, what all is required for our living so we have to cater to emergencies we have to plan so many things so is it uh, like if we have equal physical facilities our needs may not be met this way yeah so one thing that we have to be very clear about is that we are not talking about having equal physical facilities in fact if you look at it closely the physical facilities for two human beings can never be equal there is some <laughs> dissimilarity always there so we are not talking about having equal physical facilities rather we are talking about the feeling of prosperity and what does that mean it means that i am able to make out for myself the limit for need for physical facility for the nurturing of my body for the protection of my body for the right utilization of my body and i am able to ensure that yes i am more than required the same thing can be done by the other also so in a society also every human being has to have the competence to recognize the need for physical facilities correctly and the ability to fulfill the need so there may be some <clears throat> difference in the position of physical facility depending upon the role that one has to play so like for example mother has one kind of role in a family father has another kind of role in the family a person who is uh, into primary production will have one kind of role in the society a person who is in secondary production will have another kind of role in the society so will have different roles and responsibilities in the society and depending upon that we can work out the need for physical facilities so if somebody has to go early in the morning in the fields then he will require one kind of facility if somebody has to work sitting in the house he will require another kind of facility if somebody has to work late in the night for some uh, uh, proper purpose then he will require some other kind of facility so this way we can work out the need for physical facility also depending upon the uh, 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 state of the body mm-hmm. so if there is a child then the child will require one kind of physical facility and adults will require another kind of physical facility a person who has grown old will require another kind of physical facility so we can make out the need for physical facility <coughs> correctly and then make sure that it is more than required for us so for that everyone has to of course make out the need for physical facility and to <coughs> make out the need for physical facilities we need to understand clearly the needs of self and body so the needs of the body can vary in quantity from person to person something that we uh, mentioned right now 
and when we go to calculate the money required so this clarity is very important <coughs> at the same time an evaluation of justice in our relationships also needs to be done so there are some question pertaining to uh, something similar to this which was asked earlier also so when we go to calculate the money required okay so we are trying to map physical facility to money now this representation is again based on some uh, notion prevalent in society so you can see that uh, maybe 100 years back or 50 years back we are uh, purchasing rice for 1 rupee and today we are purchasing rice for 50 rupees mm -hmm. so if you look at the number the number has changed it was 1 rupee earlier now it is 50 rupees but the same 1 kg of rice and if i required in a day earlier 50 years back then a person of today will also require 1 kg of rice in a day so the physical facility if you look at the need in terms of physical facilities has not changed but the denomination or the uh, representation in terms of money has changed so when you go to articulate the money required then you have to take into account all these factors also and again uh, if i have a feeling of mutual happiness or if i have the feeling of mutual fulfillment then i'll try to work out the need for money including my relationships in the family so it's not that the old person will also have to go for uh, production uh, he or she has done the production when the body is fit and presently if the body is not so fit then the person may just take rest and the younger generation can take care of the body of the elder person so with all those factors included we can work out the need for money so the basic thing is that we need to have the feeling of prosperity we need to have the articulation of the need for physical facilities correctly the same thing will also be required when we are exchanging physical facilities so with right understanding right feeling only we can correctly make out the need for physical facility and then we can make out the need for money also presently since we are not able to ensure mutual happiness in the family many a time so we feel insecure and then we have to think that uh, everything has to be stored by me for myself because there is nobody who is going to take care of mine in the old days and that's how this insecurity is also growing and many times exploitation is also growing so we have to uh, really base our imagination for calculation of money on these factors <clears throat>